the barbs on a feather connect to one another so well that they appear to be a solid sheet and when you pull them apart all you have to do to reconnect them is rub them a bit a feather has one long shaft and there are hundreds of barbs coming off both sides of it each barb has lots of tiny barbules on both sides however on one side the barbules have hooks and on the other side the barbules provide the corresponding rods that the hooks grab a hold of the fluffy downy portion of the feathers are different however they are very soft and flexible and they provide thermal insulation that is better than our synthetic fibers. The feathers on this wing are blue, and the tiny feathers that overlap the larger ones are also blue, but as you will see later, it's not the barbs that are colored. The barbs are black. Each of the thermal insulation barbs have hundreds of barbules coming off of them, but these barbs do not have hooks. Instead, they have lumps along them. It's easier to see the lumps when the light is shining from the side rather than from above. Here you can see the lumps a bit more easily. And here it's even easier. I don't know what those lumps are, but perhaps they roughen up the barbs so that they don't cling together. Above these thermal insulation barbs are the interlocking barbs. When you pull them apart very slowly, you can see that they are crossing each other. They appear to be simply touching one another. The hooks are so small that you cannot see them very easily. I am pulling the barbs apart very slowly right now. They pull apart only a little bit, and then one of them tears open suddenly. To show how the barbs grab each other, I tore off one of the black barbs, which are easier to see than the white barbs, and then rubbed it backwards to spread apart the barbules. Now you can see that the barbules on one side of the barb are different than the barbules on the other side. The barbules that are at the top of this video have perhaps 10 to 15 small hooks at their tip. Notice the bright white dots. Those dots are the ends of the hooks. Here's a slightly different viewing angle and position of the light to give you a different view of those hooks. The small light colored blotches are pieces of my finger that rubbed off onto the feather. Even when your fingers seem to be clean, they are constantly producing skin cells and liquids. Here is another view, and I'll move the focus in and out to help you see those hooks. The barbules on the other side of the barb are longer. At about the middle of each barbule is a slight bend and then the barbule becomes lighter in color and smaller in diameter. At the bend location are a few more, even tinier barbs. Since I rubbed this barb backwards, all of the barbules are separated from each other, but those barbules are normally aligned so that their light colored ends are forming a ridge. The bends on those barbules cause all of the light colored tips to align with one another. The hooks on the other barbs grab those light colored tips. The arrow is pointing to the ends of a couple of the hooks. The barbules on the top in this view are the long ones that form a ridge. The light colored dots along the bending zone are the very tiny barbs at that location and they are reflecting light like a fiber optic cable. The barbules on the bottom with the wavy ends are the ones with the hooks, but in this view the hooks are underneath so they're difficult to see. 
the blue feathers are only blue when you look at them from a distance. When you look at them closely, you can see that only the shaft and primary barbs are blue. On this particular bird, the barbules are black. The feathers of peacocks are a bit different because they are meant for visual displays rather than for flight. The bottom of the feather has the white fluffy barbs that are similar to the thermal insulation barbs of other birds. When a light is shining on them from the side, you can see that each of those barbules has the same type of lumps along it. Above these thermal insulation barbs are the barbs that start out white and then become colored. Unfortunately, as with other iridescent items, it's difficult to get photos that properly show these colors. Above these barbs that start out white are the barbs that are completely colored. Some start off with barbules on only one side. Each of these colored barbules have segments or knobs along them but I don't have the necessary lenses to figure out exactly what these barbules look like. As with other iridescent items, most of the colored areas look black. The feather is now on a black background and it becomes almost invisible. The colored areas are easier to see against a white background. And it's also easier to see the segments, knobs or bumps along the barbules. These type of feathers are best seen with your eyes, but you need some type of magnifying glasses or stereo optics.